Who are you? I understand your curiosity. I'm strange. I was a baker's apprentice in Dunwall Tower. A friend to Jessie and the little girls. Then afterward, I made my name as a painter. Now, I'm obviously something much greater. I hope that satisfies you. Because you won't get more. I ought to just kill you. But I'm going to give you a warning for the sake of my sisters. Oh, well, very impressed with you once upon a time. Stay away from me. There are great changes coming, and I'll expect you not to interfere. I have influence in places you won't expect. But as for Arnold Timsch, do what you want. I won't hold a grudge. I'm done with him. Is that who you were looking for? Well, she's a bit of a bitch. And the artwork's hopeless. I know you have your reasons. I wasn't expecting them to be a statue. Somebody heard it. Nobody seems to be coming, though. Letter from a doctor. Barrister Timsh, I'm afraid I cannot in good conscience remain your mother's physician. The way you repeatedly deny her access to practices which could potentially restore her lucidity is nothing short of a death sentence, and I wish no part of it. Good day to you, sir. That is a heck of a painting. That is gorgeous. I'll find you, you hagfish. Here you are. I didn't know you could teleport on to people to, like, step on their heads. You now. Someone help me out. How does that work? Do you just like It's like a quick little tiny bit of time where you can do something. But I'm not able to hit that window. Dang! Help! Dump you in the river. Take metal. Damn you! Fall down already. Disappear! Uh huh. Someone help me out. Take that. I believe we lost it. Oh, come on. For the wall. Bastard. 
Judging by the fact that no one else came, I don't think there's many people left awake in this place. Anna, this is Arnold. If you happen to awake him while no one is present, I've prepared this for you to remind you of recent events to help clear your mind and put you at ease. The plague has ended. I have married and will become Prime Minister, just as you always wanted. My sister and brother are both here and doing well. Your last will and testament has been written and approved. We all love you, Mother. Now go back to sleep. Rest. Everything is fine. Such a ghoul. from Timsh. Scott, do we really need that alarm device in my office? It's ugly, the colors clash, and the cable is marking up the woodwork. I'm positively certain that the way it's been attached to the floor will cost a few thousand in coin to mend. Eviction list. That's a lot of money, 20,000 coins, 16,000 coin. Benedict, I need to know what you expect regarding the Danforth Holding Company. They're only a month late and they've been good for it in the past. Normally, I wouldn't hesitate to invent a plague infection complaint against them and have all their assets seized, but they have a link to the boils and they, as you know, are on the do not touch list. It's hitting a little too close to home. I'm afraid you may have to settle your dispute with them by some other means. Staff, Barrister Timsh was complaining about squeaking in these doors, so they've been removed until the repair order comes in. Please don't throw anything down the shaft or do anything childish. Given how greedy they seem to be.
Oh, I really thought I got everybody on this floor. to a song sung in Morley. I'll let you read this if you want to. Oh! This is the 78 thing. The world. Take the tarot card, the world. From the 78, draw the world. Lay the tarot card, the world, at the feet... What did that say? At the feet of the one with the eyes of blackest void. I mean, that's the outsider. The outsider-like shrine, perhaps? Note from a lawyer. I suggest you do some research into cases concerning similar acts of arson. I don't think your client has a case, but if you confuse the issue enough with terror tales, the jury might just vote with their hearts rather than their heads. It's what Timsh would do, I trust. God, that is so loud. Okay, I think that's it for this place. And we're supposed to go back and meet Thalia. Thalia. Thalia? Um, where was the... Shrine for the Outsider? Yeah, we shouldn't go out that way. In fact, let's take the dumbwaiter to the top floor. right. What now? Cut your palm and bleed on the card. <sighs> sure. This is a bad idea. Burn the bloodied card at the hearth of a man who dreams of being lord. To Timsh's fireplace? Lord of all.
Thank you, Cranny Rags. I wonder if bend time would allow me to take people out kind of in combat. Oh yeah, it says at level 2, time is completely stopped. At that point, then definitely you could take people out, even during combat. It's going to take six more for the next level, though. Mm-hmm. So there's supposed to be some rooftop access? To the waterfront? Is it is that just the way I came or Quiet. Nothing. I can't reach it. Forget it. I'm going back. What the? Uh, I think it's time to go. This is his will as agreed. Uncle's dead. I've killed now, haven't I? My, how odd that feels. But you were promised information. Well, my uncle came under Delilah's spell. He was obsessed with her. Everyone knew she'd been a servant at the tower before she studied under Sokolov. She was a painter, an artist. Beneath my family's class for certain. My uncle became infatuated, but he looked older and made us keep candles lit all night. He was afraid of the dark. One night we all went to Waverly Boyles for a seance. It was an amusement. We didn't know what we were doing. I thought only the dead appeared at seances. But suddenly Delilah was in the room with us. My uncle nearly died of terror. She was there, but not there. We saw her as if she was very far away, standing in the old Brigmore Manor, painting at an easel, painting a name. It was your name, Dowd. That's all I know. 
I hope you find what you're looking for. Sounds like Delilah may have been a witch. Because they mentioned Brigmore, and the next DLC is called the Brigmore Witches. So much for the good barrister. He had it coming, though. Men like him can never trust anyone. His own niece turned on him. Are you ready to go? Let's go home. Overall chaos, high. Hostiles killed three. Three? I know I killed one. What were the other two? At least I found almost all the money and everything of everything else. Jessamine Colbin's hands were all that was holding this city together. With her dead, the city was a fast, disintegrating web of guardsmen, overseers, nobles, weepers. Maybe this was the world the outsider was trying to show me all along. For years, I had held together a shadowy band of ex-mercenaries, street kids, and refugees through discipline and a bit of black magic on the fringes of a city that ate up innocence and weakness. Maybe today was the end of that small world. I thought of Jessamine Colbin's hands shuddering as she lost her grip on life. Whatever doom was coming, I deserved it. My people didn't. Unlocked improved armor and boot stealth. All right, what are we taking with us into the next mission? As always, sleep darts. I end up using all of them. <laughs> eh, do I want to buy health elixirs? I'll find. I'll find some. They're expensive. I don't want to buy them. Stun mine. Delivered electrical shock, rendering the target unconscious. Unconscious. I want all the non-lethal options I can get. Favors, no favors. Reduced footstep sounds. I think I definitely want that. Proved armor. Could be nice, but it's not that important given my playstyle. Greater sleep dart capacity. Yes. Bone sharp capacity. Yes. Boot stealth. More bone charm. Now that we have more capacity, let's get more sleep darts. And I think that's good. Lila is a powerful witch who leads a coven that has moved into the ruins of Brigmore Manor. You've returned to your hidden base in the flooded district to plan your next move. Master Dowd, we've been attacked by overseers. The base is lost. The men are scattered, some captured by the overseers, and the leader is in your chambers as we speak. If we can regroup and take out their leader, I believe we can still drive them back. I want to know how the bastards found us in the first place. Eliminate Overseer Hume. Overseers have taken the base by surprise. The assassins are scattered and some are captured. Free them to retake control of the area. Meeting Dowd, excerpt from a journal. 
Another stinking mouth, that's what my mother said. A mouth that had needed feeding for years on, then would sass her every time it opened. First words I can remember, her saying that. When she'd drunk for so long that her eyes stopped working for good. Drunk an ocean, it seemed to me. I left the patched up shack we called home. But before heading out, I reminded her of all the times she'd put her hands on me or thrown something in my head. The night she'd rushed me like an ox and sent me down the back stair. All the time she told me I was just another stinking mouth. Last thing I heard was her cursing me from her bed, cursing the blind dark. Running with my pals, we had to stay sharp to make enough coin to keep from starving. Same story, across the aisles. Not the biggest kids, but sometimes the smartest and the meanest, when we needed to be. The only way to stay off the back alley mattresses. Not desperate enough to go out on the drain flats with the mudlarks. So it was the knife for us, trying to catch the eye of the hatters or the boys from Bottle Street so they'd take us on. But when a dandy from Circonos, Circonos stepped down from his polished couch and cracked my dear Daedra's pretty head off and left her twitching and dying in the muck, I snapped off one of the wooden gazelles on top of the coach and drove the splintered end into his eye as deep as it would go. Last I saw of Deirdre, she was still, eyes wide to the grey sky. But now I like to remember her with a smile, laughing from the void at the one-eyed dandy with the gazelle coming out of his head. No one would take me after that. The city watch made a full sweep once a week for months, trying to catch me. Even the Grand Guard came in from Karnaka, down in Circonos. It seems the dandy's daddy was the Duke of Circonos. I was too much trouble for my friends from the old neighborhood. Anyone who saw me tried to drive me away, threw rocks to get me to leave, or tried to get a bag over my head, hungry for the reward. Even the gangs cursed me on sight. Billy's bad luck, they'd say. Hexed. She'll make it bad for all of us. You may think you know what loneliness is, but I can tell you, you don't. By late in the month of harvest, I had a hate inside me that would have choked most. Then I met Dowd. It was early in the dark morning, the only time I could go out. Walking the streets of the legal district, I saw them up ahead, three who looked like boys from the city watch, but dressed out of uniform. They were out for blood and coin, running some kind of murder racket waiting on a drunk barrister to stagger out of a bar at just the right time. I didn't see him at first, but in the flicker of an eyelid he was on them, out of the cold night air. He used a single blade, nothing else, and it only touched each of them once, at the left side of the throat. Their blood splattered and steamed on the cobbles. Quick movements, an occasional grunt, dark hair and the glimpse of a long scar down his face. When it was over, he made for the rooftops. I'd never seen the like of it, so I followed. I could have stayed and looted the poor bastards he left bleeding. Could have eaten for a month, most likely. But this seemed bigger. So I tried to stay up with him. Tried to stay hidden, without losing sight of him. All across Dunwall, into the wrecked and ruined parts. He crossed into what I could tell was his territory. Hidden sentries and odd masks. I thought I'd seen everything in the city. All the gangs. But this was something else. Clinging to roof tiles and watching from behind chimneys, I watched then followed him into an old building. Inside was all gloom, rotted carpets and desks full of rat-eaten papers, paintings ruined by the wet. There were weapons and practice dummies. Men lived here in secret, training with knives and crossbows. I lost track of him and continued to explore, but I was a fool. He'd known I was following and came up from behind. When I saw him, I froze, waiting for him to speak. You followed me, found this place, and now you're not begging or running for your life. There's nowhere to run, I said, and I'm not very attached to it, to tell the truth. He came close and looked me right in the eyes, trying to see some light inside that would tell him my story. You think you're already dead inside, but I'll give you something to live for. You fight for me and kill people like the ones who've hurt you. I just nodded, feeling relief for the first time in months. I really like that. That was really cool.
takes a special kind of person to be the leader of something like this, to recruit people. Memories, or sorry, memoirs, excerpt from a captain's deathbed memoirs. I tell you, the very sight of the animal is uplifting. Its size rivals the largest boats, and its songs resound across the ocean. The great fins are as long as two men. A single fin is as black as the rocks at the bottom of the darkest waters, but the remainder of the animal is as white as Tivian snow. Even the tentacles hanging beneath its face are the palest white, twisting and dragging in the cold depths. When the great whale breaks, everything else is lost from focus, distant and diminished, as if you were transported to a lost, lonely place that does not, uh, cannot exist. My entire life I ran after this dream, burned into my mind when I was but ten years old. Since my first year at sea, the apparition has never left me. I've hunted its trace, following half-told rumors or the thinnest of clues, part of a song played by musicians in a Morley pub at the edge of a town north of Calcony, once from a sketch found among the belongings of a dead sailor. On rare occasion, I was guided by more substantial evidence, an evening's meal, and conversation with a captain who had sighted the great whale a season past. At thirteen, I was already well familiar with whaler foam, and by sixteen years I was second captain, sailing uncharted stretches of sea. When I got my own rickety boat at twenty, I was already known as the bloodiest whale hunter in all the isles, the most consumed, the maddest with frustration. Hunting and killing hundreds of whales, I never saw it again. I drove my ship and my men like hounds in the worst winter. Over a lifetime, I carried my hope of seeing it touching the cool dead flesh once it was hoisted over the deck. I needed to hear its song again, to understand the effect it had over me, to immerse myself in its final moments of life. Now, racing against my age and infirmity, my growing madness is killing this vision, this childhood dream, so that I wonder if it was ever real to begin with. My life seems already written, and I have failed. I realize now that it was crazy, this dream. Did it really exist in this world? In mine, yes. Think you'll get your own squad after what happened last night? Never doubt it. You mean he saw a chance for personal glory and acted prematurely? Careful. Mm. In careless words will bring us both down. You worry on the task at hand. Why is it so damn loud? Jesus Christ. Oh God. Oh. in the Iraqi
yourself. Let's try this. Should we gather for whiskey and cigars tonight? Yes, of course. Does the mine? Like, can it be used more than once? No, I think it's been used. I can't pick it up anymore. I don't know. It seems pretty active. Oh my god. Sorry, I, I love the writing in this game, but my throat is starting to really go, and this is long. <laughs> Except from a recent book detailing Sokolov's machines. One of the advantages of Sokolov's technologies is that they share the same magnetic socket for the tanks of processed whale oil they use as fuel. When a tank is exhausted, another can be plugged into place with ease, and the process is simple enough that any common workman or even the lower guardsman of the city watch can handle the task. This applies to the arc pylon and wall of light security systems, as well as the powered carriages used for transport by those few who are wealthy enough to afford them. The only obvious downside of Sokolov's designs is the volatility of the tanks themselves. A few incidents have occurred, resulting in damage to property or bodily harm whenever one of the tanks has exploded. isn't any fight left in him. No wonder they keep to the shadows. They're nothing in a stand-up fight. What the? I know you're here somewhere, scum. Got you now. That worked pretty well. Just a second, friend. Heretical artifact. Please log this superstitious artifact. It was found on one of Dowd's men in a training area within the Commerce Building. There should be a crate in the temporary headquarters for items of this nature. Deposit it there after you create a log entry for it. Hardy crew. Summoned assassins deal more damage. Um... Nah. I have two more slots, but I really don't have any need of any of these.
I'll survive. <laughs> I'll await your signal. Free, free three more of your captured assassins. Okay, well, I think I'm going to end this episode here for the sake of resting my voice. So, hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we're going to save our crew. <laughs>